Hello, this is Eric from AD Racing Central. So we have finally reached the grand finals of Transcendence League. And what is Transcendence League you may ask? Transcendence League is a two month long Wipeout Omega Collection tournament arranged by YouTuber System Inspired who goes by the PSN name of Ewito. The first month was offline events where the participants uploaded results of time trials, speed laps and zone events and the second month was online racing events in the various modes available in the game. And finally, last Sunday, the Grand Finals were held. To me, the whole tournament has been a lot of fun to take part in and to watch. The whole thing has been held in a very professional manner, but I'll talk more about that later. In the Grand Finals, we had the top 8 players of the entire tournament, consisting of Ewito, Solar Exetic, The Honest Fork, Kid8, Hey Hey, That One Bonk, Nitro Boost 245 and Petrix. The footage you'll be watching in this video is from Beek's channel where he live streamed the whole thing and also commented. So thanks a lot to Beek for lending me the footage and follow the link in the description to watch the whole live stream on Beek's channel. In the grand finals, the top 8 players competed against each other in the different type of race events that are available in both Wipeout 248 and Wipeout HD Fury. And just look at the gameplay of these amazing players. I never get tired of watching top players play this game. I played this game well over 100 hours myself, so I am very well aware of the many skills you need to play at this level. We are talking track and memorization. You need to know all the tracks in both the games by heart, since on high speed classes you have no chance of reacting to a turn. Obviously you need perfect control of your air brakes, which is one of these things that is easy to learn but very hard to master. Also pitch control is one thing that is very important when you compete at this level. Pitching is used to control where the nose of your ship points and this will give you more or less air time depending on your need. You want to be in the air because that would let you do barrel rolls that give you quite a significant speed boost but being in the air for too long slows your ship down. And this ties into something else that is the different speed classes of the game. A top player will need to know on which bumps on the different tracks you can do barrel rolls on but this will differ between the different speed classes. So handling all tracks on all the different speed classes is really a trademark of a top Wipeout Omega Collection player. And of course, you also need to make many split decisions between using your weapons or saving them for the exact right moment. Or should you maybe even absorb it to gain back some of that ship energy. Hitting two opponents with a rocket can be the difference between coming in third and coming in first, but that doesn't help you if you have low enough energy to get blown up, then you should absorb the weapon instead. So, knowing when to use the weapon, or a turbo, or when to absorb them, is really important as well. And you need to make these decisions on a fraction of a second at this level. It was also fun to see the different ships that were used. Icarus is the speed lap or time trial favorite in Wipeout HD. Because of its stats, it has maybe the best balance between speed and handling, and also the hidden ground grip stat. So that's the ship that most players use on speed laps and time trials. But in these grand finals, that were only single races, we saw quite a lot of use of the Icarus ship as well. In the Wipeout 2048 events, however, the Pfizer prototypes were more or less all the players' go-to ship. This is a prototype ship with a very special gimmick, being that it starts off slower than all other ships on the same speed class, but every time you fly over a speed pad, you increase the speed of your ship. And this effect stacks up to a certain level, and it resets after each lap. And you also lose your top speed when you get hit by weapons or bump into walls, so it's that part to consider as well. In the HD Fury events, the ship selection became a bit more diverse. We saw AD systems being used. This is a very popular ship, which only weakness is its low top speed. Otherwise, it handles like a dream and have decent shielding as well. We saw Icarus being used a lot, like I just mentioned. And this ship has all the stats that a top player should need. Decent handling, but a high top speed. We saw Van Uber being used a bit. This ship is on paper a top tier ship. It has maxed out handling, but that can make the ship feel almost too twitchy. You almost turn too much when you steer the ship. So you need to have precise movement of your thumb to get the most of the Van Uber ship. But if you can manage that, then this is a, then this is a top tier ship for sure. Kid 8's go-to ship has always been the Piranha ship. This ship has maxed out speed stats, but the steering is very clunky when compared to most other ships in the roster. 
But then again, if you know your tracks, you know exactly when to start your turn and when to use the air brakes and so on. And that can make the piranha ship feel more precise and less twitchy like a Vanuber or Faisar. Also, Piranha has maxed out shield, and shield is a bit more important stat than what you might think. That is because making barrels to increase your speed when you're airborne will drain your ship energy. And a ship with a high shield will lose less energy when bumping into walls and getting hit by weapons, thus you save more energy to use on barrels. And your overall speed over the course of the whole race may actually increase. We also saw Asagai being represented. This is a very balanced ship, very popular in online racing overall. The races were just as intense as you would expect, and Beak was a terrific commentator. As well as the Leech Beam, but it doesn't connect. That means that one bon can use this turbo strategy, and it will give him a bigger lead. But right now, Jonas Falk and Hey are absolutely breaking away from the rest. Many of the finalists racked up first positions, and there were a lot of clutch and exciting moments. However, when the scores were tallied by the end of the event, the Honest Fork stood as the winner. Solar Exetic was on 2nd place and Kid8 on 3rd. Congratulations to the top 3 players and to all other participants for reaching the Grand Finals. I have to say I'm really impressed by how strong the community still stands around Wipeout Mega Collection. It is a great game, it's one of the best racing games ever made in my opinion, and it really has no online progression to speak of, so it's uh, super cool that you can still find online races and that the dedicated community arranged these types of tournaments. The whole arrangement has been really amazing by Ewito and everybody who has helped. Go ahead and follow the link in the description to watch the full stream on Beak's channel. And also check the description for links to many of these top players appropriate YouTube and Twitch pages. Thank you for watching. I am Eric from AD Racing Central and I'll see you in the next video.